Daniel three, chapter um, um, verse one says, and Nebuchadnezzar came uh, and made a, an image of gold whose height was sixty cubits, whose width was eight, um, six cubits. He set it up in he set it up in the plain of of Jura in the province of Babylon, and King Nebuchadnezzar sent a word together. Or, and King Nebuchadnezzar set, sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the councillors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the province of, of, to come um, to the, the dedicate uh, to come to the dedication of of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps and uh, and the administrators, the governors, the councillors. The, the, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the province gathered uh, and gathered together and together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image, and Nebuchadnezzar had set. Uh, and they stood before the image that King ne uh, and the King ne Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Uh, uh, and, and then Harold, uh, um, Harold cried aloud, and to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at, at the time that you hear the uh, at the time in that you hear or the sound of the horn, the and the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the a psaltery, in symphony, he, he with all kinds of things of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image. He, 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 the, the, that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up, and whoever does not fall, will die in worship, shall be cast immediately into the midst of a fiery, a burning fiery furnace. So, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, the harp, and lyre in symphony, and all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image, mm. image which net. King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward, came forward, and accused the Jews. And they spoke and said, "King Nebuchadnezzar, O King, live forever. You, O King, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony." He, with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does, uh, and whoever does not fall will down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who, who, whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you and do not serve your gods or worship the gold image. Which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave of a command to and to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, "Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, though that you do not serve my gods or worship the image, image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time and you hear or the sound of the horn, the Harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music. You shall uh, and you fall down and worship the image which, which I uh, which I have, have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately in, into the midst of a fiery into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Or if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fire, uh, on the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to, to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and expression, and, and, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and, uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they 
the heat the furnace up seven times more than uh, and it was usually heated. And he commanded certain men, um, certain certain mighty men of valor, valor who were in his army, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but and, threw, um, and cast them into the fire, the burning fiery furnace. Then these men, uh, th uh, then these men were bound in, in their coats, their trousers, and their, their turbans, and, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of, of into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and uh, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound to the midst of the burning fiery furnace, then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying, into, into his counsellors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of into the midst of the fire? They said, uh, they answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, Four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, uh, in, uh, in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. <coughs> then Shad, uh, and then Nebuchadnezzar, uh, as they went near the mouth of the uh, of the burning fiery furnace, and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, and come here. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these, 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 and they saw these men whose bodies, or these, these the fire had no power, and and the hair of their head, their head was not singed, and nor were the garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have, and they have, and they have, and frustrated the king's word and yielded, and yielded their bodies, at least that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own. I think we'll finish that one there. Um, so here we see that um, well actually I'll go a wee bit further back to, uh, from this story or if, I'm sure most of us know the story uh, a great bit about the book of Daniel basically the Babylonians had, had went to Jerusalem ransacked the city and the temple and took and I took a lot of the goods out of the temple and and a lot of the men that they thought were some form of use, they took them also. Among them was Daniel, and then there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and basically in, in, in the first couple of chapters we we'll get to see this picture of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they and they are men who are true to their God. We can see it quite clearly whenever, uh, ever they get brought the uh, brought the um, uh, on the food that the king has ordered them to eat, and they refuse it because it's not how how they traditionally eat. It isn't the food that they were that they would have ate under their under their beliefs at the time, but the king said no, he had favour on them and allowed them to eat, you know, and to eat what they wanted to eat. Um, but here we see them in a very difficult situation, but in the midst of this difficulty in this situation they continue to, to remain firm to, um, to their God. Mm -hmm. But what I want to look at is how can we apply this 
to our lives today. You see, we live in a day where it's becoming increasingly difficult to be a Christian in today's society. Um, there's so much out there that generally as Christians we may not agree with and we're almost forced to agree with it. Um, but this is it's very similar to what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were experiencing here in Daniel 3. They were being forced that they had to worship this idol that Nebuchadnezzar had raised up. But they chose not to. You see, whenever we take a stand for our faith, whenever we take a stand for God, whenever we take, uh, take a stand and we do not take on the ways of the world in our own lives, tribulation comes, yeah. the fire comes, mm -hmm. difficulties come. Because Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had refused to worship this idol, well, they were cast into the fire. But the important thing is, is you see when we go through the fire, we're not alone. Yeah. Um, and whenever Nebuchadnezzar looked down into the furnace, I'm sure he was in shock when he saw the fourth person walking about. <laughs> but no matter where we find ourselves in lives, no. Um, and no matter, no matter where in the world we are, no matter what situation we're going through, He is there with us. He's yes. there by our side. Yes. He's in there by our side. It's in, uh, it's, it's in the midst, uh, in the midst of the fire. He's in uh, there by our sides in the deepest oceans. Yeah. He's right there. Yeah. We can also see it in, um, during the flood. Um, and Noah was on the ark. In, in Genesis 8, 1, it, it doesn't say that God forgot about Noah. It says that God remembered Noah. <laughs> you, you see, Noah had been, again, living in a very difficult time. Um, it was so bad that, that God decided he was going to destroy the earth. But God saved Noah. And and Noah, and Noah was, was, was basically, basically left something about, this, about somewhere on planet Earth on, a, on this ark that he had made. He probably didn't even know where he was at the time. But, as I've said, we're reminded in Genesis 8-1 that God remembered Noah. He doesn't forget us. He doesn't forget us, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, he will not forget us uh, and forget us when we're in, our, in that time of need. You see, um, and David wrote in Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, hey, we can read right through the scriptures of places where people have maybe felt as if they're, uh, if, uh, as if they're maybe going through trials, going through situations that they themselves can't get themselves out, uh, out of or can't bear by themselves. But here David takes great delight in that place called, is, is that he's called, in that place that he's called, and that he's basically called the valley of the shadow of death, he takes great delight in knowing that his God is with him. And I'd just like to turn now to Mark, uh, the book of Mark. And chapter 4.
same situation as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in that they basically can't see the Lord with them because at this point they can see the Lord with them. Okay, the, the Lord's here in the flesh with them. Um, but I'm going to bring something, uh, I'll try bringing something else out of this here or two because it's, it's a slightly different situation I think. So on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they, they took him along in a boat, as he was. And another little boat, over, and, and, and other little boats were, all, were also with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. So, so, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep, on a pillow. And they awoke him and said, and said to him, Teacher, do you, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, and, and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said, to them, where? But he said to them, "Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith?" And they, and they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, "Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him?" So as I said, basically, unlike the situation in the situation in Daniel, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going into the furnace, but they were having faith that God was going with them. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the disciples here in, in Mark can see Jesus with them, so they know he's there. But they, they, and they just can't grasp something about him. But Jesus has given them the word to go to the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the lake. And and what does he do? He falls asleep. And it can be quite often that we're in our situations and we're running to and fro and it seems as if God's sleeping somewhere in the background and maybe he doesn't care. But sometimes God, it seems as if God's sleeping for a reason. So I may can and quite often feel alone. We're thinking, God, where are you? But sometimes that's when the greatest miracles come. Are the ones where we're are, are sitting, we're worrying, we're panicking about what basically what we're going to do in this situation. But although Jesus, Jesus was I'm sleeping, he was still there, and Jesus had given the word to go to the other side of the lake. And when and the disciples came to Jesus, they came to the right place. They maybe didn't have, have the right sort of attitude as to come to Jesus, but they came to the right place. But we need to remember that Jesus has power in our situations. No matter what we're going through, no matter what arrows the enemy's firing far at us, he has power over it all. There's power just in the very words of him. By his word he created the heavens and the earth. 
by his word he cast out many, many demons. By his word he calmed this storm. And you see whenever we're in the situations and we don't know where to turn, the best place to turn is this word. The, the, and the best thing we can do is turn to him and turn to his word. Because no matter what answers and I've ever and I've ever been looking for, I've always found them out. There is absolutely there's absolutely nothing that I, uh, on that that we can go through in our lives that this won't cover for us. Yes. Sometimes it may take us a wee bit of time going through it to find it. Sometimes we can, oh, we can just open up and we'll open up the page, but God has an answer to it. I know that some of us are have unsaved family and friends. God has an answer. Some of us may be waiting for healing. God has an answer. And God is able. God is able to bring you through whatever you're going through. Um, if you and, and and maybe at the moment you're not going through something which uh, highly doubt, but um, you know, I think we're going through things most days. But um, <laughs> but he uh, and you see where we keep our focus and our grip on him. Mm -hmm. he, he will bring us through, and he is faithful. As full so he is, he's faithful to what his word says. Well, we we'll just pray and yeah. <laughs> we'll just pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father God, Lord, Lord, but thank you, Lord Jesus, this is for the promises in your word, Lord Jesus. Your word tells us that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your, your presence here tonight, Lord, or this afternoon, Lord. Father God, that you would just minister your word, Lord Jesus, into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Father God, that you would just minister into our situations, Lord Jesus. Because we all have them, Lord. Father God, that you would come and have your way in us, Lord Jesus. That you would move in our lives with, with power, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. Father God, that you would. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And Father God, that you would have your way, Lord Jesus. And Father God, that you would rebuke us anytime you want to have our way, because Father God, it's your way that matters, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, that you would do your will in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Yes. Father God, come and have your glory, Lord Jesus, yes. in us as your church, Lord. Yes. Have your glory in us, in us individually, Lord. Father God, that your will over us will come to pass, Lord Jesus. Yes. In your precious and your holy name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.